Hi everyone. It is August 4, 2018. I want to thank my subscriber for sending along this article. It is important for all of you who have flood insurance. And frankly, you should all have flood insurance even if you're not in a flood plane. I just read an article how an entire town in Illinois was not in a flood plain. FEMA said you don't have to get flood insurance and it was flooded I think back in God, I don't know 2008 and <laughs> so many had lost their home had no insurance and FEMA went in to buy the town alright we'll get into that in a minute FEMA now is opening Wall Street to flood risks with catastrophe bonds. Catastrophe bonds? What's going on, FEMA? You're wanting to go a little private here? FEMA is taking an unprecedented step to expand private involvement in its flood insurance program by offloading risk to investors, a move that could portend long-term increases in premiums for homes in Houston and other flood-prone areas, where devastating storms have exposed the extent of the program's debt and dysfunction. I posted a video, I don't know, last night, and in that video I said, if you have had your home flooded, especially twice, if you do not allow FEMA to buy it for pennies on a dollar, your insurance is going to skyrocket, or they may even cancel your insurance. Well, these catastrophe bonds. I'm just going to play a little bit of this video. Catastrophe bonds. Listen to this horse sheet. As Hurricane Katrina has made landfall. Now. This is a Category 4 hurricane. Now, yesterday, it was a Category 5 hurricane. Global warming is happening, and so there's an increased risk of hurricanes and other natural disasters for which people need to buy insurance. Not every insurance company wants to have the full responsibility for paying for those disasters, essentially, so catastrophe bonds are a way of spreading the risk around. Investors can invest in these basically slices of insurance policies, and if something goes wrong, the insurance companies will pull from those investment dollars. You're not betting or hoping for a hurricane to wipe out the East Coast. In fact, if that happens, your money is used to pay for the reconstruction and rehabilitation from that disaster. So it's actually better for you if the tornado doesn't make land. In the same way that we had mortgage securitizations, catastrophe bonds are like that. Instead of buying a tranche of mortgages, you are buying a tranche of insurance policies. You okay, do not that's buy enough. That's enough, Maggie. Useful idiot. Global warming. Okay. Oh, it's so sad to see all of these young people who have been so indoctrinated. Hey, just like we were. All right. Well, how do we get through them? Um, what this reminded me of, well, when she was talking about the mortgage, what, what, what was the word she used? Let's, let's hear it again. You are buying a tranche of insurance, Paul. A tranche. A tranche of mortgages, now you can buy a tranche of insurance policies. And what could go wrong with that FEMA selling insurance policies to investors? Okay, many don't understand that FEMA, the National Insurance Flood Program, that who that that is your insurer now you go to a private insurance company and they sell you a flood insurance policy and you think that you're dealing with that private insurer but you're not it's actually fema fema makes the insurance companies the middleman and what does the middleman get for that they get to keep a third of the premium they send off two-thirds to FEMA 
they get all of their expenses paid by FEMA and if your home is flooded and your insurance company uh, just uh, denies your claim or whatever and you end up in court with that insurance company, FEMA pays the legal fees for the insurance company to fight the case. Wow! So a lot of your premium that goes to the National Flood Insurance Program, a lot of that money is, yeah, you'll see in a second, it fights lawsuits, but it's paying insurance companies to just act as if they are the insurer. They send the private ins uh, inspectors to the home to do the assessment on your flooded property. They deny your claim. And it's all through the National Flood Insurance Program. So when you think about those mortgage trances, now FEMA is going to do the same thing. Invasion of the home snatchers, how floor, foreclosure courts are helping big banks screw over homeowners. This is exactly what's going to happen with insurance now. So uh, this is a great article, Matt Taibbi, and it, how long ago was it written? Um, yeah, 2010. Remember the foreclosure crisis, which never really ended. Why doesn't it end? Well, our attorney, Attorney General Eric Holder, told us we're not going to prosecute bank fraud. It would hurt the economy. Americans, where was your voice? Weren't you a little outraged? No, okay, it's going to hurt the economy, so we won't prosecute bank fraud. Okay, we'll let banks continue on with their crimes. That is what has happened. That's not good. Really? Okay. Well, what happened? So, the individual goes to a mortgage company or a bank, applies for a mortgage. It's approved by a private mortgage lender or a bank. And the homeowner believes that they're dealing with this local bank or lender. No, because the bank then sells off mortgages to investors or big banks that buy them up. And what then happens? Well, you have an awful lot of courts in America who okay these foreclosures for banks. And that is exactly what was taking place in 2010. So when everybody was talking about how, well, too bad, you, you're a deadbeat homeowner, you just don't pay your bills, and you don't know how to manage your finances. And then we had politicians come out actually talking about how individual homeowners, they need to learn how to manage their finances. Wow. And they sure do manage our money really well, don't they? What what debt? What's the debt? Oh, trillions? Okay. Um, But what was kind of this incidental, you know, fact that nobody really talked about, not mainstream media, not the politicians, it was the biggest and wealthiest banks who bought up a lot of the mortgages from, you know, just local banks and uh, private mortgage lenders. Oh, those big wealthy banks, they just didn't know how to keep proper records. It was just a matter of office sloppiness. Who cares? The lost paperwork. It was a fraud so gigantic that it literally could not be contemplated by our leaders for fear of admitting that our entire financial system is corrupted to its core. With our great banks and even our government coffers backed not by real wealth, but by vast landfills of deceptively deceptively generated and essentially worthless mortgage-backed assets. 
this is what's going to happen to insurance. So FEMA selling off all of the insurance policies to investors and suddenly well hopefully you'll know who FEMA has sold your insurance policy off to because if you don't know well uh, who are you going to who are you going to fight this this is a catastrophe um, in the making in the making but it's also yet another scam it's another friggin scam committed by FEMA so this is 2018 April federal program meant to help flood victims spends millions fighting claims for the last two years Richard and Linda Brown have been living in a shell of a home, no insulation, drywall, or flooring, while trying to raise four kids. Their house in Louisiana was destroyed by floodwaters in 2016. At the time, they didn't panic because they had flood insurance worth 168000 while they have received less than half of that, 62000 And what did Linda say, we pay into this premium and all I want is it to just be fair and we weren't getting fair. Two years later they're living in a house that's still exposed down to the studs. And you know this has been going on with so many people um, my subscriber friend in Houston had, well, first of all, with these disasters, your home has lost its value. And many people face the value of their home slashed in half. And then they have to fight their insurance companies. But who they're really fighting is FEMA. So the Browns decided to fight the National Flood Insurance Program in court and FEMA, responsible for all flood policies in the United States, and FEMA does not administer all of the policies. It outsources most of them to private insurance companies called Write Your Owns. The Write Your Owns of all of their agents, they get paid out of the same pot of money as flood victims, the insurance companies. Some years up to two-thirds of that money goes to the right your owns. Wow, two years, uh, two-thirds. Well, FEMA, very generous to the private insurance industry, don't you think? And here it is. FEMA will allow insurance companies two-thirds of the premiums and the attorneys they hire to fight flood victims' claims. They pay the legal expenses. In effect, by paying their premiums on time every year, homeowners like the Browns help fund the very lawyers fighting them in court. Okay, you know, oh my God, Americans are, are so looted every single day. It's frightening. You know, and my friend in Houston, she finally got, is it called drywall put up? She was living with the studs exposed in her home. Her home still not complete. She was told that it might be completed by Christmas. By Christmas. Um, and if you don't know what took place with the victims of Sandy, Hurricane Sandy, look into it. 
It was so disgusting how these victims were so screwed by private insurance companies and, well, slash FEMA. The private insurance companies deny claims. And then FEMA foots the bill for these private insurance companies to fight fight people who have already been traumatized by the disaster and so beaten down, you know, it, it's like a win-win for the insurance companies and FEMA. So following a CBS News investigation of fraud in the National Flood Insurance Program, remember, 2018, but fraud has been exposed throughout the years with this National Flood Insurance Program. Um, so, yes, of course, you know, our Congress, men and women, they, oh, sh it's a shocking lack of oversight, demand answers for, from FEMA. Do you think anything's going to be done? No. No. So, CBS reports Louisiana homeowners affected by 2016 flooding are victims of same schemes and underpayments that New York and New Jersey families faced after Superstorm Sandy. I don't like, I don't like people getting screwed. FEMA wants to speed purchases of Houston homes hit by repeated floods, by repeat floods. Okay, you've got these manufactured floods, flash flooding taking place all over the place, and people are being denied or underpaid what they really uh, should be paid, having paid those premiums, but they're not. FEMA and the private insurance companies work together. FEMA, don't worry, private insurer. We got your back. And when your home is flooded out, especially repeatedly, you lose value of that home. You get really tired. You get beaten down, worn out. And people just say, fine, we'll take whatever we can get. And FEMA steps in to purchase the property. So this was back in September 2017. When was Harvey? When was Harvey? Was it August? God, I, I don't remember the month. Interesting, though. What, maybe a month later, FEMA wants to speed purchases of Houston homes. This is what FEMA does with every natural disaster. They scoop in, buy up homes, and buy up entire communities and towns. And towns. Um, and this has been going on for years. Here, a property acquisition handbook for local communities. How this handbook came to be. This is on FEMA's website. Across the nation, more and more flood-inundated communities are choosing property acquisition as a hazard mitigation option. Yes, whole towns are selling out to FEMA. And Vermont, well, when was this? 2013, after FEMA buyouts, towns envision uses for land. What use? Okay. Vermont cities and towns have purchased 30 properties damaged in Tropical Storm Irene with FEMA funds. FEMA gives local towns and cities money so that the local governments, town officials, can say, we'll buy your property. I posted a video on the floods last night, and that's exactly what they're doing in Monk, Center, South Carolina. What does FEMA require? It requires 
that all buildings get torn down and no permanent structures built. Wow. Yes. Because FEMA is buying all of that property and they don't want any permanent structures built because they don't want people to be flooded out anymore and it reduces the the risk. So with the National Flood Insurance Program that's supposed to be paying your premiums, instead what they do is they pay the legal expenses of the private insurer to fight you in court and you are someone that doesn't have the resources that these private insurers do because they're actually getting everything paid by FEMA you're not being paid what you should be paid so FEMA then takes all of that money and buys you out and buys whole towns out and whole communities out and then says you can't build anything permanent. Huh. Does that sound like a reshaping of the United States? It's exactly that. It's exactly that. This has been going on for decades with FEMA, buying out homes and properties. Here, FEMA may buy flood ravaged land in New Jersey FEMA buying homes in an Alaskan town because of climate change. FEMA public-private partnerships. Wow. Learn more about public-private partnerships in emergency management. What does that sound like? Oh, building resilience through public-private partnerships. So your insurance premiums that you think you're paying to your private insurer, FEMA uses that money to buy your property for pennies on a dollar and doesn't allow any, any building on it. And if it buys areas from towns, it tells the town you might be able to use it as a public park, but that's it. So it is absolutely one of the tactics that they use to get people into their mega regions and to leave, well, that Agenda 21 map now go with the emerging mega regions America 2050 this is the redesigning of the United States and in that gray zone what you will have is no human habitation all human habitation will be in these colored zones and as crazy as that may sound to an awful lot of people, as incredulous as it sounds, it is absolutely true. And FEMA using your money, oh, you pay for everything. You pay for your enslavement. But FEMA uses your money to buy whatever it can, whenever it can, through these natural disasters to get people out of all of these regions. And I wish that I could, here, let me see if I can get a bigger, ah, okay, there you go. So all of these people, remember the Missouri floods? I'm going to show you some pictures. Um, unbelievable amount of property, thoroughly des destroyed prime farmland destroyed for years and FEMA and George Soros scooped in and bought up all of these properties in where's Missouri well it's in the gray 
somewhere around here. I can't even see the border lines. Um, thoroughly destroyed were farmers. Oh, man. Well, I just wish that people could see through what is taking place, but building resilience. FEMA is just yet another agency working for the United Nations, implementing Agenda 2030, Sustainable Development. And you can put in, well, I put in Deborah Tavares Resilience, but there's an awful lot of videos on that resilient stuff. You know, those sustainable cities, making those cities resilient. These are the code words for Agenda 2030. And you, if you don't know anything about this, you Rockefeller's Resilient Cities, fires in Northern California, ICLE, which is the, uh, it's a German, I think it's a German company that has implemented, it's like the local arm of the United Nations taking over via NGOs and private uh, developers, um, public-private partnerships in your local area, and it's happening all throughout the world. Resilient cities take over for the new world order, and that's exactly what it is. And if you don't know the buzzwords for Agenda 2030, Agenda 21, here they all are, affordable housing, um, benefits for all, climate change, common core curriculum, endangered species, down zoning, global warming, greenhouse gas. There's a lot of them, sustainable, sustainable economic development, sustainable development, sustainable medicine, local governments for sustainability. It's all the United Nations taking over countries, taking over their sovereignty, reshaping these countries, and it, the reshaping, well, if you have children or grandchildren, I would think that you would want to fight as hard as Deborah Tavares is fighting to stop what is taking place in your area because this is, once they get these mega regions and all of these people out of these areas, you will see that people will be watched 24-7. They won't be driving cars. They won't be able to travel. Oh, it is complete and utter enslavement by the elite. It's true. No joke. Let me just do this quickly. So FEMA's got buyout plans. It has had so many buyout plans, uh, programs going on all over the country. And I posted this video, FEMA buying out flooded homes, no rebuilding, creating green space, for Agenda 2030 Mega Regions. I don't know if it's on this channel, but it was on Kafka Winston World. But I, I do want to show you this, which is, it makes it very, very clear to me, and I'm going to go through quickly these articles. Weather weapons and earthquake bombs. World leaders condemn Britain and America's secret arsenal. God, don't you just wish that you could just have normal adult conversation with people and say, hey, look at this article, and they would read it and go, wow, I got to check that out. No. Uh, Government-sponsored technologies for weather modification. Uh, Washington's New World Order weapons have the ability to trigger climate change. Weather warfare, the invisible U.S. military offenses in weather weaponry. Navy research paper disrupt economies with man-made floods, droughts. And that's exactly what is taking place today. And then the fires and, you know, we've got a timeline history of weather modification, weather warfare, climate modification, and geoengineering. 
We have our Air War College, an Air University. Weather modification, the ultimate weapon. And, and this was by a lieutenant colonel in the Canadian Air Force. Okay, well, maybe you Canadians have that Air War College, but I'm sure we have our Air War College. Research report submitted to the faculty in fulfillment of the curriculum requirement. Well, that's what it was. Ooh. Weather modification, the ultimate weapon. And what is this note? It says, a superior piece of work, first-rate research review. United Nations International Building Codes. That's why we have international building codes. Well, how is it? You know, people aren't even, like, questioning. It's almost like there's no curiosity w whatsoever in most Americans' brains. And nothing begs questions. So we have international building codes. And I, in my conversations with Americans, trying to, you know, just get them to, like, think, oh, why is that? So I say, why do we have international building codes? Uh, well, it's a good thing that the world has the same building codes. No. No, it's not a good thing. Here is an excerpt from the preamble of, of Agenda 21. Land cannot be treated as an ordinary assets, asset controlled by individuals and subject to the pressures and inefficiencies of the market. So guess what? Private ownership is on its way out. United Nations Program of Action Promoting Urban Transport. Oh, those high-speed trains that you will pay for because your taxes are going to go up. Um, all countries should. This is the United Nations dictate to, I think virtually every country has signed on to Agenda 21. The signatories is long. What should all countries do? They should reduce transport demand. Adopt urban transport programs favoring high occupancy public transport. Encourage non motorized modes of transport by providing safe cycleways and footways in urban and suburban centers. Why do you have those bank li uh, bike lanes? It's the United Nations dictate. All right, what is this? Wow. That's a flood. That is a pretty intense flood, don't you think? I think so. And this was Missouri, 2011. 2011, flooded out. Governors of um, two states, Missouri, can't remember, but they fought the Army Corps of Engineers trying to stop the Army Corps of Engineers from blowing up the levees because, well, they needed to save a town that I'm going to show you the pictures of in one moment. Look at the massive flooding that took place in Missouri, 2011. Prime farmland. I think it was a million acres, got destroyed. And guess what? We've got farmland in Oregon and California suffering either fires or drought. Farmland, farmland, flooding in Iowa just recently, farmland. Food is going to be very expensive as it did get very expensive after this flooding took place. And it was all deliberate. And it was heartbreaking, man, to see these farmers. Pictures of the farmers. You know, these 
men that were not young and then read the stories. Their farms were in their family for like 110 years. Never before had they experienced this and it was deliberate. The Army Corps of Engineers flooded out all of this deliberately blowing the levees. Um, and the farmers could not, they said, we can't farm on this land due to the massive flooding because the soil was so destroyed they wouldn't be able to actually get a crop going for, I think, three years. What did they have left? when everything was destroyed and they couldn't grow the crops for years. The only thing that they could do was sell out to FEMA or George Soros for pennies on the dollar. Yeah, the Army Corps of Engineers felt it was really important to save Cairo, Illinois. This is Cairo. Okay. Um, this is Cairo. So they saved an impoverished town with a, a small population and they flooded out. Flooded out all of that farmland. Hello? Can you not see something wrong with this? Now, all of this was not, these are not pictures of after the flood. Cairo was saved. Cairo was not flooded. This is what Cairo was. And they needed to save Cairo. Really? So, you would have to think something's very wrong with this picture. Something is very wrong with this picture. Army Corps makes tough calls with floods. Do we flood prime farmland in Missouri or do we allow Cairo, Illinois to flood? Hmm, let's see. What should we do? flood flood this impoverished town or flood the farms where the nation gets its food I don't know yeah Farmers angry as Mississippi allowed to drown 130,000 acres of rich farmland while Elling, Illinois town is spared. Uh, you could not, it, it, just from these pictures alone, uh, if you can't get that something is very wrong here and the flooding of the farmland was deliberate with the Army Corps of Engineers blasting the levees, at least it should make you think, okay, maybe I, what, okay, it does beg questions, I guess. Corn prices rise. Look, guys. Oh, man. You know, watching this over and over and over again, it's very, very hard. Sorry for going on, but we're getting so unbelievably screwed by FEMA. Army Corps of Engineers. Army Corps of Engineers does it again with Houston. They decided we've got to release those reservoirs. And if those reservoirs were not released, then thousands upon thousands would not have had their homes flooded. And, you know, the friend that I have in Houston, her home would not have been flooded. It was the Army Corps of Engineers. 
and the Army Corps of Engineers works together with FEMA and they are working for the United Nations to bring in the mega regions. All right, so I'll link below to everything, but be prepared, you guys, for your flood insurance. It's going to it's going to get very, very high. Those of you who don't have flood insurance, I have to tell you, over the years, people, uh, I met people in Baton Rouge who moved to Baton Rouge after getting flooded, flooded in uh, Hurricane Katrina, Louisiana. They moved to Baton Rouge to a, a non-flood plane and I interviewed them, posted the video on Kafka Winston World. They were flooded. So, you know, it's getting to the point where it's almost impossible to protect yourself anymore. I just wish people would really band together in their own communities and, and, and somehow, you know, just say enough is enough and take back their own power and get rid of their town government officials and stop listening to them stop stop letting these government officials dictate to you how you are going to live your life those who are comfortable yeah they still believe they'll always be comfortable an awful lot of people who had that belief even just subconsciously you know that invincibility that we all have oh it's not going to happen to me until it does. It's a real shock. Very hard to recover. So I say get out there fighting and protect what you have before it's too late. Ciao guys.